Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Sami here. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the hidden leaf master. Movie 2, hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. Now hear me out determination makes everything sound cooler just by fact. How so? Be asked, as she and Naruto passed by two young trainers who were battling Pokemon, not caring to stick around, and watch Uratata battle a Pidgey for very long. She and Naruto were just having a conversation about it. Petal was taking a nap. Are you talking about being determined, or the word determination? The determination to explain myself. Oh that does seem cooler. Be admitted, as she rubbed her hand against her chin. Being forced to explain yourself was a negative, but by adding determination, it made it sound like you were in the middle of doing something heroic. That you were doing something bad, but your reason was heroic in nature. I have the determination to get stronger. Be trite with the fire in her eyes. I mean, wanting to get stronger is already cool. Take something not cool, and use determination to make it cooler. Naruto could see that she just wanted to say something cool. The determination to peek at a girl bathing. He stared at Naruto. Did you peek at me bathing? He asked that, before she saw that Naruto sent her an annoyed look for the accusation. She thought about the statement, before she nodded her head. That gives off the impression that something dangerous is happening, and you're peeking to protect her. Peeking is uncool, but protecting a girl while making yourself look bad is kind of cool. He admitted, before she looked at Naruto again. Never give yourself that kind of determination though. Noted. The determination to eat sweets. Oh nice what is going on there. Naruto stopped their stupid conversation in favor of looking at a crowd that had formed on the side of the road. He saw a massive tent was set up, and there were two clowns juggling poke balls in front of the tent. Then Naruto walked past the crowd with B. Neither of them even looked back at it. Naruto was more interested personally in seeing something else, he just was not in the mood to visit a show like that. B had no interest in it on the outside at all though. They completely walked past it, neither of them noticing that all of the workers had big RS on their uniforms. Hours later. Thick thighs. Thick thighs. Put more of a K on the K, and extend the TH sound thick thighs. Thick thighs are kind of fun to say. We allowed the words to roll off her tongue, and she found that they were fun to say. She kept a serious look when she said them, but the fact was that she enjoyed the way it sounded, and how it rolled out of her mouth. Thick thighs. Thick thighs the thickest thighs. Thick thighs. I challenge you to a Pokemon battle. Thickest thighs thicker than thick thighs. Naruto stated, as he went further than just thick thighs. He hummed in thought, as the two of them didn't pay any attention to the trainer who had challenged one of them to a battle. Everything started with T with that one, and I really got that TH sound in. Naruto bragged about the use of words. He put some thought into it. Can I change it up? Go for it. Bubble butts, but before butts bubble, butter beans biscuits. He gestured back and forth with her fingers, as she tried to make one longer than the one that Naruto made, something that was fun to say. Buds, bubbles, and I got my own name in that one. Kind of hungry for biscuits now. His stomach growled in response to her mentioning food. She looked at Naruto, and saw him thinking about what she had said. Before the butts bubble doesn't make sense though, and what your biscuits have to do with the bubble butts. I know, I kind of didn't know where to go with that. Be stated, as the younger trainer ran back in front of them, and pointed the poke ball at them. I felt hungry, and I was kind of mentally just lost for it. How about okay, I think I lost this game. Be admitted her defeat. Mon battle. They walked by the trainer again without noticing him, as they continued their conversation. She didn't have a good comeback to what Naruto had said, nothing she could think of would roll off the tongue the same, or be more satisfying to say either. Naruto reached into his backpack, and pulled out their ration bars, handing one of them to B. They didn't want to stop their walking to go look for food this time, so the ration bar was good enough for the moment. Kami got mum. B covered her mouth with her hand, as she chewed, and talked. She swallowed a ration, before she continued. Okay, this is going to sound really satisfying to say knights never know ninja nonsense, nor know nightly nacho nabbing. B looked proud of herself, as she said that one. Knights never know ninja nonsense, nor know nightly nacho nabbing. That is a good one, and now I want nachos. Battle. Kid, we don't want to battle you, we're in the middle of a conversation. Naruto stated, as he finally looked at the kid that ran in front of them again. Petal was taking a nap, so he couldn't battle even if he wanted to. B nodded her head, she looked at the kid, and saw that he had a single poke ball, and figured that he just wasn't worth the effort it would take to battle him. Both of her Pokemon were above the strength that a kid would be able to match with a single Pokemon that a kid's strength could catch. We made eye contact, you have to battle me. I pick you, Whooper. Naruto ran forward, and kicked the Pokemon, knocking it into the river, since it looked like it could swim. Naruto pointed to the Pokemon in the water that was floating on its back, knocked out cold. I don't want to battle, I am having a conversation with my partner here. It's rude to interrupt our talk. Naruto tried to teach the kid. The kid kicked Naruto in the shin. I didn't even want to battle you anyway, loser. 
thick eyes. B stated with more enthusiasm, as she gestured to her the eyes, her guarded facial expression, adding to the joke of it. She nodded to herself, before she gestured to Naruto's own thighs. Thick the eyes. The fact that those two words sound so good together, and are so fun to say it's stuck in my head now. B was just having fun going back to that. It was a stupid conversation. Still, when she was sore from training, and could barely run, sometimes a stupid conversation was a great way to pass the time. Bubble bum it's like bubble butt, but it just sounds more satisfying. Bubble bum you're right, it kind of does. B put a finger to her upper lip in serious thought, wondering why bum sounded more fun than butt to combine with bubbles. It's like bubble beam, the Pokemon moves the M sound just right with the B sound. B figured it out after she thought about it. M yeah, the B and M do sound better together. B had the smallest of smiles. She hid her smile, and coughed into her hand. Thick thighs. Thick thighs. Sometimes it was okay to just relax, and be a little goofy. Okay that mountain looks like it might be this mountain so well we aren't lost, we got a little off the path. They should have been in town by now. Well, they weren't traveling at the moment. They were sitting in a cave during a heavy rainstorm, with a fire roaring in front of them. They didn't have much choice in the matter, but to take shelter from the rain, made even more apparent by the fact they were soaking wet. Naruto was perfectly fine in just his boxers, and a shirt, while B had switched to just the one piece that she wore under her clothes. Their clothes were drying in front of the fire, and B was drying her hair off with a towel. When did we get sidetracked? When we go get water at the river, we must have just gotten back on the wrong path. We were a little further away from Naruto was forced to pause when the cave they were in rumbled. The Kuriak, so once the storm quits we leave the cave, and go this way. Naruto drew a path with his finger. If it stops soon. B complained slightly. Rain was great, but not when you were traveling by foot. What was worse was that it had been raining for at least 13 hours at this point, and it showed no signs of stopping anytime soon. Every once and a while a wild Pokemon would rush into the cave to hide out from the rain, but those Pokemon would go much deeper into the cave than they were. A small group of Oddish huddled together near a wall, as they moved past them, and went deeper, following behind a Vilplume, and a few glooms. Well, on the bright side I see a boulder, and boulders mean training, and this boulder is a big one. Naruto grinned, as he walked away from the fire. B watched with interested eyes to see what kind of training Naruto was going to do. B lost herself when he started to unleash a barrage of half-power punches against the boulder, not full power, but half-power. He was shipping pieces off of the boulder, and moving around it to shape it how he wanted to. He was sculpting the boulder with his fists, and she covered her mouth with both hands to force down a giggle, when she realized what she was using the boulder to carve. The cave rumbled again, and Naruto stopped training with a more worried look when he realized the rumbles were getting worse, and worse. They weren't stopping this time. Everyone out of the cave. Naruto called out to all of the Pokemon that had escaped deeper, out of sight, but not out of his mind. Naruto waved his arms into the darkness, and surprisingly the Oddish group with Philoplum and Glooms were the first ones to actually obey and leave the cave back into the ring. The wall of the cave burst open, as an onyx dug its way through the walls, stopping another group of small Pokemon from getting out of the cave. The rumbling had come from the digging of an onyx, and that onyx getting closer and closer to their location. The onyx didn't know it was raining, and Naruto saw rocks, and mud started to fall over the edge of the cave entrance. Oh crap, that is going to be a rock slide everyone out, out. B joined Naruto in calling for the evacuation of the cave. She grabbed her clothes, and put them in her bag, before she put it on. Naruto lifted his bag over his shoulder, and Pedal jumped onto his shoulder. The onyx filled up a good portion of the cave though, and it had stopped digging in response to their shouting. It was visibly enraged, and it thrashed its body around wildly, scaring the smaller Pokemon from going around it. Go Heracross. B was ready to battle. Heracross just looked at her for a second, before sitting down, and relaxing without listening to her. It ignored Onyx, and gave Pedalol an interesting look, but that was about all it did. His face had a sour look on it, so B returned him to his poke bowl. She was going to get magic next, but Pedalol jumped off of Naruto. Lil. Onyx just roared, and kept thrashing around, but Pedalol attacked. She jumped at him, and slashed her leaves against his chin, cutting into him, and knocking his head into the side of the wall. Pedal called out to the small Pokemon behind Onyx, while the giant was still dazed. She jumped over a boulder that Onyx launched at her, and attacked his chin again. Okay everyone, this way. Naruto ran to Onyx's side, and gestured to the path that was freed up for them to take. A larger group of small mon ran past him in order to escape the collapsing cave in favor of the rain. Onyx swung its tail at Naruto. Pedal jumped behind Naruto, and took the blow, stopping the tail with her body. Naruto looked at Pedal, and made eye contact with his partner, and nodded his head. They aren't fighting together, he's not giving her orders, but why do they feel so in sync with each other? B had to wonder with a small sparkle to her eye. Pedal didn't even need an order to take the attack, and Naruto had known Pedal would help him. He had his back turned to Onyx, while he provided the small Pokemon with the chance to escape, and the confidence. 
petals sprayed dust at Onyx, and the Pokémon started to move slower. As a result, it gave a powerful twitch, and Petal created a green energy call on top of her body. She launched it at Onyx, and the attack hit dead center, putting the Pokémon down for a moment. Big rocks were starting to fall to the front of the cave. Onyx was knocked out, but it had not been alone. A Steelix came out of the same tunnel created by the Rock Snake, and it had seen Onyx get taken down. There were only a few Pokémon that needed to escape the cave now, but they were frozen in fear at the sight of an even bigger, even more enraged Steelix. Petal jumped in between Steelix and Naruto, ready to continue battling, when Steelix unleashed an ungodly loud screeching sound. Naruto grabbed a sheep Pokémon, a Mary, and was shocked by the Pokémon in surprise, before he lifted the Pokémon over his shoulders. He joined him. She had her ears covered with her hands, and she let magic out of his poke bowl. He picked up two Mary, while she herself picked a Fluffy up into her arms. The Pokémon were all frightened much too much to be able to escape on their own, and they were the last of the Pokémon that needed to escape. Over half of the exit was blocked off with more, and more of the exit getting blocked each passing second. So they ran towards it, and got out of the cave. Petal was hit by an iron tail, and smashed into the cave wall, much more injured from that attack, than when she took a hit from Onyx. B. Catch. He caught Mary when Naruto threw it, and he jumped to Petal, and grabbed her, rolling, as Steelix slammed his face into where Petal had been. He let go of her mid-roll, and allowed her to stand on her own, while he landed in a crouched position. He sent a thumbs up to his Pokémon, who rushed back into battle with Steelix. He didn't take nearly as much damage from her leafage though, as Onyx had taken, and her energy ball didn't have as much effect either. You got this. Naruto calmly spoke to Petal. Any doubt Petal had was erased. Lil. Petal jumped onto Steelix, who started to thrash around to shake her off. Naruto ran to Onyx. Ah. Naruto realized what was wrong, he had wondered why the Pokémon was so enraged. He grabbed onto a shining piece of metal that was jammed into Onyx's joint, and he started to pull on it. Steelix went for him, and he looked behind him for a second with a startled look. Petal hit Steelix with an energy ball to stop its charge against Naruto, getting its attention back to herself. The cave entrance got blocked. Steelix was knocked out, and Naruto gripped as hard as he could, and pulled the metal shard out of Onyx, cutting his hands in the process. He grinned when Onyx woke up and looked around, the sharp pain that enraged it gone. The Pokémon looked at Naruto bleeding and saw Steelix was knocked out. It gave a soft roar to Naruto, slowly getting up and more gently going into his own tunnels. Outside of the cave. Come on everyone. He was using her hands to pull any rock or boulder that she was physically capable of lifting off of the pile that was blocking the cave entrance. She had magic helping her and he was lifting larger stuff, but some of the stuff was just too large for either of them to easily lift. Shattering the boulders could just cause even more to fall down, so they had to be careful about what they could and couldn't move. The scared Pokémon seemed satisfied though. The scary Pokémon in the cave were now trapped inside of the cave, so they started to disperse deeper into the nearby forest to hide from the falling rain. These eyes became shocked when she saw the Pokémon they saved were all starting to abandon Naruto. He saved you. B shouted at the group of grass types led by the Villaplum. It ignored her. It did not ignore, as an Oddish stepped in front of it, and glared at it, the Oddish green instead of blue like the other Oddish. It was giving a challenging glare to the fully evolved Pokémon, who glared at the strangely colored form. Bilplume kept walking away though, and the Gloom followed after, the Oddish, or most of them, followed the Gloom. Finally, Oddish was left alone, as it walked towards B, and started to launch sharp leaves at the boulders blocking the cave. It started to chip pieces of them off. Blue seaweed-like tentacles, a group of them, pushed up against the boulders to stop any more of them from falling. Tang. A Tangel was one of those in the cave. B whispered in confusion, she had not seen all of the Pokémon in the cave. She got back to work though, and she noticed the rocks were being pushed from the inside of the cave. She opened up the cave with magic enough that she could see Naruto again, and he crawled out of the opening with Petal on his shoulder. Thanks B. No problem. B grabbed his arm, and pulled him out of the tight space she had created, and Naruto got to his feet on the grass. Oddish started to walk away once Naruto was visibly safe. Tangela on the other hand walked towards Naruto, approaching him. The tentacle Pokémon smiled with its eyes at Naruto, who looked down at the Pokémon with confusion only for a moment. Naruto just extended his fist down to Tangela, who extended a vine, and bumped it with him. Hey Oddish. Oddish looked back at Naruto. Thanks. Naruto stated with a nod to the wee Pokémon, Oddish turned around at the thanks though, and looked at Naruto more seriously. Naruto recognized the Pokémon, as the one it had helped before. You didn't owe me anything by the way, I helped you because I wanted to, but I guess this makes us even ha. Naruto stated to Oddish. Oddish nodded. Tangela was already walking away after being thanked, while Oddish started to walk towards Naruto with curious eyes. It looked a pedal along Naruto's shoulder, who was injured, but in good enough condition to not need treatment right away either. Oddish also looked at Naruto's bleeding hands. Naruto got down to his knees, and took out a pokeball, and offered it to Oddish. 
You don't owe me anything, so want to join. Naruto enlarged the Pokeball, and made the offer. Adish had been following them to pay back the debt that it felt that it owed no doubt, and now that debt was paid back. Naruto was giving Adish the choice in the matter, now that it had no feelings of debt to him, so the Pokemon was not going to be guilted into doing anything. Adish smirked. They walked away, and Naruto stood up with a nod, accepting that Adish wasn't going to join them. The look between Naruto and Adish silent the entire exchange. She gave Naruto's hands a worried look. Adish turned around and knocked Petal off of Naruto's shoulder with a razor leaf. Adish was ready to battle, and it was smirking. Naruto was stunned for a moment, and Petal jumped between him and Adish, ready to battle. No Petal, not you. Petal looked at Naruto, who stepped in front of her, and raised his fists up, and Adish seemed more excited. He seemed more excited as well when she understood what was happening. Adish didn't want to just join the team. They wanted to fight Naruto to decide if it would join the team or not, but not Naruto, as a Pokemon trainer. They wanted to fight Naruto, as if he were a fell Pokemon, to see if Naruto was worthy of commanding it at all. They didn't want to team up with a trainer that was inferior to him or equal to him, Adish only wanted to follow a trainer who was better than him. Naruto could be a great trainer, but that didn't matter to Adish. Adish sent Razor Leafs at Naruto. Adish got punched in an instant, and sent flying into a tree, hitting the tree with a loud thud that was drowned out by the rain. Adish landed on his feet, and walked weakly for a few moments, while Naruto raised his fists back up. Adish just sent Naruto a look, before nodding, and sitting down, accepting it. With that attack, Adish knew where it stood. Adish didn't put up any struggle at all when Naruto threw his Pokemon, and caught him. Adish, shiny, joined the team. Okay there buddy, you look like you're just about good to go. Naruto wiped the sweat from his brow, as he halted Gyarados with its injured tail, with the Pokemon going back into the water. A large pile of boulders caused by the rock slide, had knocked the Pokemon out of the water, and more rocks had landed on top of the Pokemon trapping it, unable to move. He and B had been working hard with Matchup, Petal, and Oddish, in order to remove the boulders from the Pokemon. 6 A's. They had been spending 3 days helping out the Pokemon who had suffered from the rock slides that happened all over the mountain, clearing our parts of the forest that had been destroyed, so that the Pokemon could help the forest recover. Now they were helping clear the wreckage from the river, and they had come across the large dragon-like lake serpent that had been in desperate need. Dairados knocked Naruto to his butt, nuzzling his head against Naruto's body, as thanks for saving him. The large Pokemon then did the same thing to B and Machuk, with the two of them a lot more uncomfortable with the action than Naruto was. The Gyarados sank underneath the water. So why are we still doing this? B asked, as she got up, and leaned over, her sweat dripping off her body, and onto the ground. She was exhausted, so exhausted that she didn't have the energy left to make the trip to Kridiak for the day. They had been so busy helping Pokemon, that she hadn't gotten very much physical rest. She collapsed back to her butt. Jairado stuck its head back out of the water, and it allowed water to fall from its open mouth. In the water, which spilled between Naruto and B, were three nuggets of gold that had been hidden in the water. They were covered in river mud, but they would still sell for a good price. With its thanks to them given, the Jairados started to swim up the river back to the lake where it came from. That was nice of it, let's rest for a moment. There are still two more areas I saw that need to be cleared up. Naruto laid back, and rested on the grass. Petal rested on his chest, while Ladish leaned up against the side of his head, and relaxed. He stared at Naruto with a stunned expression for a moment, and she looked at Machuk, who had already collapsed onto his back from his stamina being completely exhausted. So she returned him to his Pokeball. Why are we doing this? Because we are strong enough to help, and it's not like we're in a hurry. The Kritiak and Mahogany aren't going anyway, we will get there. Naruto knew they had gotten off the path they were on several times, going on several adventures between the towns that they had started at. What should have been a couple of days, was turning into weeks of travel, thanks to the side adventures they were doing. He started to do push-ups. You're going to collapse. He collapsed, as her stamina reached its true limits, and her arms just weren't able to hold up even her light weight. She had exceeded her limits, and now she was paying the price for it. Relaxation is part of training, you know. What? If you train too much, it can actually slow down how much you progress. Sit down, smell the flowers, let your body recover, and rest. Then once you recover, get back to hard work. Naruto helped B by flipping her onto her back, and he pushed a berry into her mouth. He did that with one hand, and he smirked at her. She chomped on the berry, and allowed it to fall off of her face, munching the sweet fruit after a hard day's work. She actually smiled, and looked at the setting sun in the distance. She saw Naruto hop to his feet, launching Petal into the air. The Pokemon landed in the smooth river, and Naruto joined with the cannonball. It's raining men. Adish just watched them. Not going to join them. He asked the Pokemon, amused, as she watched Naruto and his partner playing in the water. The Pokemon just seemed satisfied watching. Days later. We're here. This town gives me a creepy feeling. 
Naruto started with a shiver as they entered the town of Akritiak, which had a Japanese feel to him more so than other towns had so far. He could see a geisha woman entering a building, and he saw a burned down tower. It was the middle of the night, and the air just had a creepy chill to it. I don't like it here. He grabbed his shoulder, and pushed him towards the hotel, not the Pokemon center that most trainers got to stay at for free. They had money, so they would use a hotel that was better in the quality it provided. She was fine with camping, but it would be nice to actually have a hot bath, and rest on a soft bed. Then let's go to bed already, before the ghastly come out. The hell is a ghastly? Those type Pokemon. I do not like this town. Naruto started with a shiver. He hated the idea of ghosts, they gave him the creeps enough that he did not want to go to a town that was famous for them. He didn't need B to push him anymore, the faster he went to a hotel, and slept, the better. Naruto saw a large floating dark sphere with gas around it, and he saw the creepy look on his face. Ghastly. Naruto asked, as he passed by it. Yes. Though that's not too Naruto started, before Ghastly made a face at him. No. Naruto grabbed B by the hand, and walked at full speed towards the nearest hotel. He was having none of that. He had yet to find a downside to living in this new world before tonight, and that downside was the existence of the things he had been sure didn't exist. Ghosts, and ghost-like beings that gave off the same creepy feeling. Mr. Fight's Pokemon is afraid of ghost types. B asked with an actual amused sound. She hadn't really seen anything actually bother Naruto or make him seem uncomfortable, and honestly, she was happy to see that there was more to his personality than just being a laid-back person. Hey handsome, do you want to come see a show? Hell yes. Naruto started to change directions, letting go of B, as he headed right towards the building where Geisha was calling out to him. He had a grin on his face, while B grabbed the back of his shirt. Hell no, hotel, ghosts remember. But Geisha B, you're not going to see some prostitutes Naruto. Geisha aren't prostitutes, only some of them are. Geisha are respected for their years of training in traditional forms of entertainment. Originally, Geisha weren't even women, they were men called Taikamachi. Visiting a Geisha show is like going to see culture. Naruto complained, as he was dragged towards the hotel by B, not putting up a fight. He had always wanted to see a Geisha in his homeworld, but he had never had enough money to see one, nor a family that would take him. Now he was an adult with money, and he had the chance to see this world's version of a Geisha, and they were even called Geisha. Ah, not just handsome, but well studied. Miss, please, allow your boyfriend to see our show. It is not often that we are visited by a man who knows our history. The entrance Geisha spoke, as she approached B. B stared at her. Why does everyone think that? B asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow. You're not. Odd, usually only children go on journeys with people they are interested in of the opposite sex. Well, then you should have no problem if the handsome young man views us perform our show. The Geisha grabbed onto Naruto's sleeve, and gently pulled. She was no match at all for B though, who just pulled Naruto out of her grasp. We're sparring partners, rivals, and friends. There is nothing wrong with the two of us traveling the world together, nothing unusual. B didn't talk to the geisha woman, she was speaking to herself when she spoke. Her father had approved of the idea after all, and there was no way that he would suggest she travel with a boy for the purpose of dating. And Gaylor. I tell you, when I found B knocked out I don't think I had ever seen her glowing like that. It was when I knew that I found a man worthy of her. Somebody with whom she can inherit our dojo, somebody that can push our gala karate to new heights. So you are playing matchmaker with our daughter. You don't get it, she seemed so happy when she slept. I completely understand, and I support your decision. If you believe this man can inherit the dojo with her, and make her happy, that is all the reason I need to support this. B didn't know her parents' desires, as well as she thought she did. The soft bed. The working toilet. Air conditioning. Things that you really appreciated after weeks of traveling across the region, and though she knew that it was just a temporary stop, and it would be back to hiking right after, she couldn't help herself, but enjoyed it anyway. The plush softness of the bed was unlike her own bed at home, it was even softer. Her bed at home was a futon, and it had years of use into it, so it was worn down. The soft carpet on her feet was unlike the hardwood of her home, and the giving dirt, and grass of nature. Also TV. He flipped through a couple of channels, before she noticed that they were limited to what was showing in Johto, and Kanto, it would seem that international television was not really a thing. She saw a commercial featuring a ship taking a trip to Hoenn, and stopping in Unova, but she didn't see anything about her home region. He jumped into a fighting stance when she heard a loud woman scream. The fuck was that? Naruto ran out of the bathroom, wrapping a towel around his waist, as he did so, his body covered in steam, and water. Pedal jumped from the bed, and onto his shoulder in an instant, while B grabbed a poke ball from the side of the bed, and rushed into the hallway. She was ready to throw the ball in an instant. Naruto followed her. The geisha-style room attendant was on the floor of the hallway, holding her face with her hand, blood seeping between her fingers. There was a shadowy figure that was running away, and turned the corner, as a few more people started to get out of their rooms. It's a headwind, B, you stay with her, and put pressure on it. Everyone should get back into their rooms, there has been an attack. 
Naruto called out, stopping several people from making any movements. Naruto nodded to B, but she just grabbed the woman and helped her to her feet before she led the woman into the arms of a random hotel guest. Naruto got a look at the geisha's face before he took a deep breath. He saw the change in Naruto's face and how he seemed to go from rushed and worried to disappointed and annoyed. Wow just wow I'm just going to say no to all of this and go back to our room. Somehow, I feel that the attacker is going to come back again very soon. Naruto deadpanned as he went back into his room and a very confused B followed after him. She had no clue what was going on, but a woman was attacked. Pedal was just as confused as B was at first before she seemed to understand it as they passed by the geisha themed attendant and understood it as well. After Naruto's shower. Stage. Fake blood, unless you're paying really close attention, it looks real. She wasn't bleeding from her head, she was bleeding from a blood tube concealed in her sleeve. It's used in acting and performing and junk like that. Naruto explained what he thought to be. He had seen hints on the woman's face and the way she was holding herself to suggest that the event had been planned or at the very least it was fake. Creep Hotel has nice quality and stuff but this whole town is deep into ghost nonsense. I bet this is going to be one of those. There was a loud scream once more. He rushed out of the room while Naruto sighed and rubbed the top of his head in annoyance before he got to his feet and walked after B. You're the next Uzumaki Naruto. There was writing in blood on the long mirror in the hallway and a terrified hotel guest had collapsed and pointed at it. B had a shiver go up her spine when she saw a collapsed woman on the ground and she read Naruto's name in the mirror. Wow, creepy. Whatever it is, it knows your name. B whispered to Naruto. We signed our names as guests when we got here. Naruto explained rationally, since nothing that out of the ordinary was happening if this was part of the hotel's schemes to get some tourism. A haunted hotel in a haunted town was going to get a lot of visitors for sure. You see fake dead bodies, very convincing dead bodies, but fake all the same. Naruto gained a look of disbelief from B as she pointed at the corpse and the mirror. You're creeped out by ghost Pokemon, but this doesn't get you. Not really, I can explain this once you understand it's all a scheme to get customers, kind of makes it less scary. Well, good night. Naruto went back into the room with the yawn. Late into the night. The scratch on the window. He was kind of frightened by every small noise or sound, but every time she looked over at Naruto, he was sleeping completely peacefully. Not a care in the world, he even had his ears plugged so that no screams would wake him up. The mood of the room was terrifying, just impossible for her to sleep in. The TV turned on by itself. He gave a cute squeak in fright when white static appeared on the screen. She grabbed Magic's Pokeball and got ready, but the TV turned off by itself a minute after it turned on. She looked around the room before she saw a shadow on the wall and looked towards the window. The shadow raced by the window, so she rushed over to the window and opened it up, looking out the window by sticking her head out. Nothing. They were on the fourth floor. Naruto Naruto Wake and B reached out to wake Naruto up with a hand on the shoulder before she realized he would just make fun of her for being scared. Gripping her hand into a fist, she went back towards her own bed. Her blanket was on the floor. A chill went down her spine once more when she saw that her things had been moved, the blanket was on the floor, and her pillows were under the bed. Naruto's blanket had been thrown off of his body as well, but he slept peacefully even without a blanket. Pedal was annoyed and woke up before she just crawled up Naruto's shirt and relaxed against his chest. Creepy things were happening. Naruto slept through them all, but B couldn't find herself able to do the same. Every time something happened, she had to investigate it. Her fight or flight sense was activated, and she wanted to fight whatever was scaring her so much. B tripped back on herself. She couldn't stop herself, not when she saw a large figure, a massive figure, with sharp red eyes, peering out from the darkness. The darkness keeps it from being viewed properly. She tripped over herself and fell on Naruto. The fuck go to sleep B. Naruto, there is a giant figure right there. B turned to look back at the figure, only for it to be gone, and Naruto looked towards where the figure was. He could hear the sounds of talking and walking in the hallway, only slightly, and he could guess what was happening. Let me guess TV turned on by itself, shadows on the wall, dark figures, people outside the window, things moving on their own. Naruto asked her. So you were awake? No, but if I wanted to scare somebody with a haunting that is what I would fake. The TV was controlled by a universal remote, but the guy outside the window, who is attached to wires from the roof. The things moving on their own, an invisible ghost Pokemon or a psychic Pokemon, and the dark figure would be a ghost Pokemon. Naruto explained it all away. B was startled by how easily he guessed all of the stuff and figured out how it could be done. When he explained it to her, it didn't seem scary anymore. That makes sense. There might be such a thing as ghost Pokemon like Ghastly, but there is no such thing as a conveniently placed real ghost in a hotel. Now go to sleep. Naruto told her as he turned over and drifted back into sleep himself. The next morning. Well sir, you won. You managed to not get scared and figure out the mystery. Please accept this as a sign of our respect. 
you and your traveling companion had won these tickets to the hot springs on Cenebra Island. Good for one luxury night stay. See, told you it was all fake. Naruto accepted the tickets. So do you give these prizes to everyone? Naruto asked, as he looked over the tickets. How did you figure this out? He asked Naruto, since she couldn't imagine him figuring something out like this easily. The prize changed this month, last month it was an apricorn ball made by Kurt himself. Those are our usual prizes, but Kurt has been feeling under the weather. Of course, we so rarely have guests figure out the truth. I think the last time we gave out a prize was 4 months ago. Naruto just hummed in acceptance, and stashed away the tickets. With that, let's get out of this creepy town, as soon as possible. Naruto turned around, and walked right out of the hotel. A shiver ran down his spine when he left the building, and B shivered when she left after him. I agree. B did not have a restful night's sleep. She looked back. Her jaw dropped, she turned her head around quickly, and said absolutely nothing at all. She kept her mouth shut when joined Naruto, and walked towards the town's exit. She could only keep her mouth shut for so long though. Naruto. Don't think about it too hard. Naruto the hotel. Don't think about it too hard. But we're really going to ignore that. If I don't, I'm going to piss my pants, collapse, or throw up or even a combination of the three. I am not turning around, or looking behind me, or coming back to this town in the future. Naruto stated with a firm tone to be. She agreed. Holy crap. The hotel isn't there anymore. Somebody else behind them left the hotel. Blurg. Naruto collapsed and threw up, but didn't pee his pants, the second he got out loud confirmation that they stayed in a ghost hotel for the night. B patted his back a few times, helping him get the stress vomit out of his system. It's okay, let's never go back to that hotel. I'm erasing this from my memory. Me too. Laundry. Traveling didn't mean you did not wash your clothes, that was a fact of the matter. B did the laundry, that was something that she just refused to allow Naruto to do. Not because she was a woman. She had a multitude of reasons, for starters, Naruto hunted down Pokemon, fought them, and killed them for food. She just did not have the heart to do that, so since he provided food for them, she was happy to cook the food to the best of her ability when it was her turn, and to do laundry when they found a water source. So the starting reason, not her main reason, was so that she could divide the work evenly, and fairly. Reason 2, was the fact that she did not want Naruto washing her bra and panties with his bare hands. She did not mind if he saw them, when she was not wearing them on her body, but him having his hands on them just made her feel awkward. She trusted him, but trust did not mean that there were no awkward moments or topics. Okay, Heracross can you please help me out? B asked Heracross nicely. The Pokemon had been unhelpful, though it was respectful in that it did not attack them or make their lives harder, it didn't obey her. It would stay away from them physically and emotionally, and just send them looking down, and again. Metric was helping, but Heracross seemed to lack the respect for her to help her hang the laundry from a tree branch. The laundry needed to dry out, and the more tree branches they could use, the more laundry that could be done at one time. Naruto gave Heracross a look, as he passed by, and he slapped Magic on the back. Naruto was soaking wet, as if he had jumped into the river, and he was carrying what would appear to be a stack of stakes. He had a grin, so she could tell that he had jumped into the river to get the blood off of him, and the bloody smell was gone for sure. He didn't ask what Pokemon it was. Protein berries are nice, but nothing beats a good source of protein to grow muscles. Naruto tossed the cuts to Petal. He stopped using Oddish during the day, since his feisty Pokemon was more fond of when the sun went down. He wasn't truly opposed to sunlight, but he was slower, less active, and overall didn't enjoy the sun as much as he enjoyed the moon. So he planned to make it a point to keep his second Pokemon in his Pokeball whenever possible during the day, purely out of respect. Isn't that right Heracross? Naruto tossed another stake onto Pokemon's horn. Heracross grabbed some laundry, and started to fly up to a tree branch, before hanging it on the tree. How did you get it? You didn't even ask it to help. Be questioned, since her Pokemon didn't listen to her or show her any respect. Magic listened to her faithfully, but the one she caught seemed to have absolutely no faith in her at all. Yet Naruto was getting it to help, just by giving it food. How did you do that? B was a little upset if she were to be internally honest with herself. Do you want me to explain? Naruto asked her. No, I'll earn Heracross's respect. Well, then I couldn't help you anyway. Heracross doesn't respect me either, he's just being prideful. I mean, he did lose to a Pokemon weaker than him. My best bet is he won't listen to you until you prove yourself worthy of commanding him at least that is the feeling I get. Naruto explained anyway, since B was going for the wrong thing. Building respect could come later, but the first thing she needed to do was to build trust, and show her Pokemon that there was a reason why she was his trainer. How do I prove I'm worthy? Don't ask me, I don't explain my wise sayings, I just say them. So, you want me to show you that I'm worthy of you even though you already lost to my trainer's skills? He asked Heracross, as she stood up. She took her shirt off, she was wearing her one-piece suit on, and she took a stance. Go on, try me do it, give me your best charge, and I'll stop you with nothing, but my body. B was ready. 
Her feet were dug into the ground, and she had her weight centered. If Heracross came at her, she was sure that she could stop it. Heracross jumped out of the tree, and landed on the ground with a loud thud, staring her down. It sat down, and showed it had pulled a berry out of the tree, and it tossed the stake back at Naruto, before it started to suck the juices out of the berry. Then it turned away from both trainers, but kept a watch over B from the side of its eye. B was not ready for that. By that, she meant when Petal jumped at her, and tackled her right in the lower gut. She had dropped her stance when Heracross refused to fight her, but Petal was happy to take up the challenge. She recovered quickly, as her feet were pushed deeper into the grass, and the heels of her feet touched the water behind her. That is great training, that really hurts Naruto, gives me a good punch in the abs. Let's get in some sparring while the laundry dries Naruto. B asked in confusion when Naruto just laid back on the grass. He smiled and looked up at the sky, before he yawned, and waved her off. You don't want to train. I just fought well. I was just in a life or death battle. I kind of want to relax, anyway, I got hurt during my fight. Training is good, sometimes the best training is just taking some time off. Naruto could see the value in pushing yourself beyond your limits, but when you were injured, you needed rest, as well. He was injured, so he would keep his training lighter, and there was no chance in hell that sparring with B was going to be light, or easy. Anyway, if both of us aren't at full strength, would you even want to spar? Naruto glanced towards her. Petal looked at B, and then at Naruto, before she jumped on top of Magic with the aura that she was upset. She wanted to see the spar. So you got injured, do you mind showing B stopped when she noticed that Naruto was already asleep? She had wanted to tend to his wounds, but he seemed to be doing what he needed to be done, and resting up. She looked over at Petal and Magic, before she took up her fighting stance again. Magic, time to go through your practice. Show me what you can do now. B was ready to train with her Pokemon. B looked at the clothes, and saw it would be a while before they dried. She grabbed a berry, before she chucked it up into the air at an angle. Then she ran after it, going full speed, before she jumped, and caught the berry before it could hit the ground. Throwing the berry again, she raced towards where it was going to land, and caught it, rolling across the ground, she threw the berry again mid-roll. She went back to her feet, and gave chase to the berry in an instant, only she wasn't fast enough to catch up to the berry this time, and it hit the ground with a splat. Looking around, she went for another berry, and started to practice running by herself, since nobody was going to train with her. Ow. The next berry she failed to catch hit somebody. A young woman in a black uniform with a red R on the front of it, bright blonde hair, and a single poke bowl on her belt. She was in the middle of looking through Naruto's backpack, while he slept peacefully nearby, not paying her the least bit of attention. Bloom. Naruto actually grabbed the woman's ankle, and yanked on her leg, causing her to trip, throw her Pokemon up into the air, before it came back down, and hit the top of her head. She knocked herself out cold with her own poke bowl. That is a stupid uniform. Be deadpan when she saw the woman on the ground, knocked out cold. I'm going back to resting, and might want to tie up the thief girl. We can drop her off at the police station in Mahogany Town. Good night. Naruto just went back to resting without a care in the world. B just sighed, before she nodded her head. Okay, why didn't any of you 3B see her magic taking a nap, and Heracross didn't care what happened to their stuff. Petal didn't seem to care about the value of material goods either, so had just allowed it to happen, even though she had been awake. She returned both of her Pokemon to their balls, and tossed Petal on top of Naruto. I'm going to train, so you look after this thief for cooked dinner. B was a little annoyed overall by the situation. She punched the tree. Her jaw dropped when her panties dropped from the tree, and landed on Naruto's face, but he sneezed away. Petal was a problem though, before she used her leaves to wear the panties on top of her head, and mocked B. Okay that is pretty B didn't speak louder than that, and contained her laughter, before the image of Petal wearing her panties on her head, was just too much for her to stay mad at. She couldn't stop herself when her own spandex fell on top of her head, as well, and suddenly her mood went from bad to okay once again. She kicked the thief awake. What is? Get out of here, and don't steal anymore. B stated, as she moved her spandex off of her face to say that, and the criminal scrambled to her feet, sneezed a couple of times when she got too close to Naruto, and Petal, before she ran off into the forest. She wondered what the big R was all about. The end. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like, if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.